Hi everybody, I'm Lisa Young Sutton and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I am excited to share a wonderful Grand Tableau idea created by our own Anthony Carter, who you can meet in my Facebook group, Lisa Loves Lenormand, Traditional Method of Distance and Beyond, because he's the moderator. Now he posted the instructions in the group and I could not wait to, to try this. I mean, the spread I'm about to share with you is the one I just laid for myself. Now I want to start by um, telling you that in my book, um, you can find the chakra references. Hang on. I have a chakra quick reference sheet where I have them conveniently placed all together. They're also located um, within the individual card pages. Um, and this tells you not just wh which card relates to each chakra, but it, it explains what those chakras represent and all of that fun stuff. Okay. Now, in case you don't have my book yet, I will um, quickly tell you now what the chakras are and the cards that represent them. All right. And while I do that, I'm going to stick this under your noses. This is a, um, a chart. This is a nice chart. It's got a lot of information on it front and back. Um, I got this when I was becoming a Reiki master. And I know you're going to ask. So um, you can get this from innerlightresources.com, rainbow cards and charts series. All right. So here we go. The house card represents the root chakra, which is located at the base of your spine. This chakra is associated with stability stability, groundedness, and security. The lily represents the sacral chakra located just below the belly button. This chakra is associated with our emotions, passions, and creativity, and not only the emotions we generate, but in how we deal with the emotions of others. The sun card represents your solar plexus chakra located in your stomach area. This chakra is associated with confidence, the feeling of being in control of your life or your, your personal power um, and your self-esteem. The heart card, of course, represents the heart chakra and is, uh, which is located near your heart in the center of your chest. This chakra is associated with our ability to love and show compassion, not just for others, but ourselves. The letter card represents the throat chakra, which is located in your throat. And this chakra is associated with our ability to communicate verbally. Uh, the key card represents the third eye chakra and is located between your eyes. This chakra is responsible for your intuition and is also linked to your imagination, which is imperative in your ability to create and manifest. And lastly, the stars card represents the crown chakra, which is located at the top of your head, actually just above it. Um, and this chakra is associated with your connection to the divine and your spiritual connection to yourself and others. It also plays a role in your life purpose. Now, what's the idea behind this spread? Well, the idea is to pull out all of the chakra cards and charge them. So you want to pull them out and you want to focus your energy, put your energy in them, focus on them. And basically you are telling them what they are going to represent in this spread. Okay. Now, in order to understand the information that the cards will provide in this spread, you need to understand how energy and the law of attraction operate. In fact, this is going to help you um, understand the method of distance or card reading in general. So uh, this is important. You might want to write this down. Hang on, let me, let me adjust that. There you go. Okay. Card reading can be described as a picture of where your energy is flowing or better put what you're a vibrational match to at the moment the cards are drawn. Think of yourself as a magnet and how you are magnetized at any given time is determined by what you are giving a lot of emotional energy to or what you give your energy to frequently. In other words, you might think of something infrequently, but if you attach a lot of emotional energy to it, you can attract it. If you give your energy to something frequently, you can attract it. 
Uh, we can say that what you attract is simply a vibrational match to the energy you are emitting, right? So that's kind of like three ways that you attract things. Um, so if you're miserable, you will attract miserable people. Mm -hmm. Now in card reading, the cards that appear for you in a small spread or the cards that fall closest to your card in a tableau are the greatest vibrational match to you at that moment for better or worse. Negative or low vibrational cards show problems with where or how your energy is flowing. That's all it is. The cards that fall further away in a tableau are currently not as strong a vibrational match as those that are close by. So we could say that it's not as urgent that you address any issues that you see in those far cards. Okay, now back to the spread. So take note also that I'm using my Chakra Lenormand Mini, of course, uh, for the Chakra <laughs> spread. All right. Um, now, because this is a type of advice spread, or actually it's more of a how am I doing spread, you want to lighten the card meanings a bit, just as you do for a daily draw. So in other words, if you connect to a, a chakra card via the coffin, that doesn't mean that that chakra is dead or dying, but you want to describe it more as being suppressed or buried. Now, um, oh, you know what? There are some other things I can show you in my book real quick. Uh, check the advice sections for um, all the cards, right? Because that's gonna help you um, in, like right here, under the descriptive words, under each card section, um, you'll find an advice section. And that will help you um, to tell you what, what to do with those chakras, right? And like I said, this is really similar to a, this is a type of, not just similar, this is a type of how am I doing spread. So if you look at the, uh, read over the instructions for the how am I doing GT in my book and you will better understand how this um, spread operates, right? For example, I'm using the clouds in this, how, am I, how are my chakras doing spread, right? I'm using the clouds for confusion or not seeing something clearly rather than seeing it as troubles. Um, and the fox, I'm, I'm using the fox for what's driving me crazy or, or what do I distrust or just to say that something is wrong rather than using the fox as sneakiness or manipulation. All right, now also note that I chose to use a nine by four format, which is not what I normally use because seeing a different format helps to get me into a different mindset. So I use a different format for atypical or unconventional unconven spreads. Now, the, the last thing I wanna point out is that um, if you're looking for the, um, the fate line or the center four in a nine by four, they are combined and both found here, your center column. You can kind of, if you look at this as a book, right, and you just opened it up, this is the binding, right? Boop, yeah. So it's, it's the center column. <clears throat> and I'm pointing that out because Anthony mentioned a lot more steps, um, you know, when he posted this in the group. Uh, and he mentioned looking at the brass tacks, <clears throat> excuse me, he calls it the brass tacks, the, the first three, the center four, the, the fate line, the corners, right? But I actually didn't uh, do any of that because for my purposes, I didn't feel it was re relevant. You certainly can, you can get a lot more information uh, by you know, using all of that. Um, but I don't know if it's necessary for this type of spread, honestly. Um, so I didn't, I didn't go there. Also notice that I covered the house names because this is a proximity based spread and in the method of distance, I do not use houses and that would distract me. And yes, there are readers who combine the two, but I am not one of them. <laughs> so just, you know, use what you normally use. Follow the steps that you normally follow. Okay. So um, yeah, so you start just by shuffling your cards while focusing on your chakras with the intention of finding out which of them need your attention right now, okay? 
Now the steps for reading this, for interpreting the spread are simple. You start by locating your card and you want to see if any of the chakra cards fall in your comfort zone. You wanna take note of the cards that connect you to those cards as well as examining the cards around them. Next, you look for any chakra cards that fall outside of your comfort zone and you wanna check the cardinal point cards, the connecting cards, as well as the cards around them. Uh, now you determine which chakras need work based on any low vibrational cards around them or connecting you to them, focusing first on the ones that fall closest to you, followed next by those further away that are surrounded by low vibrational cards, right? I mean, remember that you're striving to raise your vibration here um, and negative cards represent a low vibration. So once you know that you have some chakras that are out of alignment, how do you fix those little buggers? Well, I can tell you how I do it. First and foremost, through meditation. I mean, I live in a heavily meditated state <laughs> because for me, meditation is a lifestyle. It's not something you do once in a while. So I'm connecting to source daily by going to Alpha and meditating. You know, it's funny, in, in um, the older books I read, I mean, I've, I've been reading books that date all the way back to, to 1903, and they, they call um, meditating entering the silence. I love that, entering the silence, yeah. So I begin every morning by setting an intention to cleanse and align my chakras, all right? Now, you can easily do this by focusing on each chakra. Once you go to alpha, once you get into that, um, you know, receptive state, that state of mindfulness, you focus on each chakra, you visualize it expanding and clearing as you draw in light energy from above and breathe it through the chakras. While at the same time, you are making a declaration, you are declaring to the universe that you intend to align those chakras chakras. Basically, working on your chakras is a process of breathing and focusing and visualizing and intending and believing, right? Because those chakras, uh, you know, are, aren't something tangible. You can't, you can't physically touch them or see them, right? So it's all about breathing and focusing and visual, visualizing and yeah, all of that. All right. So beyond that, knowing which chakras need your attention is an invitation to do some shadow work. You can use um, cards, either the Petit Lenormand, the Grand Jeu Lenormand, the Tarot, Oracle, any system that you are fluent in and that you think fits your purpose, you can use to start asking some questions. Once you determine from this spread which of your uh, chakras needs help, right? So for example, if the sun card uh, tells you that your solar plexus chakra needs help and you know that this chakra connects to your confidence, self-esteem and personal power, you can now lay cards to find out why. Why is this a problem or what you can do to fix those issues? You can ask uh, what hidden beliefs are lowering my confidence or how can I improve my self-esteem or what hidden influences are impacting my personal power. Okay, I think you get the idea. So let's quickly look at my spread. All right, and this should help you in uh, interpreting yours. All right, so my position is good. I'm high and to the left. <laughs> I love being high <laughs> and to the left, yeah. And um, yeah, and it's great because um, three chakra cards fell in my comfort zone. So I have something to explain to, to all of you. So I have the stars uh, for the crown chakra. I have the lily for the sacral and the letter for the throat chakra. And this shows what I am currently giving my energy to, right? Where my focus is, as well as what I am a vibrational match to at this time. All right, but check out where the other chakra cards landed. All right, here's me. This is my line of sight. And here are the other four chakra cards. This is exactly how they landed. In fact, at first I was looking all over for them and I was like, wait a minute, there's one. Oh, oh, there's one. Yeah. Okay. 
So it, it's almost as if they were saying, you know what, we're, we're all aligned here. All right, we don't need your uh, attention right now, though there are some, like look at the, the root chakra card, right? So I still have to uh, read those cards around them to see what's going on with them. But the fact that they fell outside of my comfort zone tells me that they do not need my attention right now, or first and foremost. These cards are what I am a vibrational match to. All right? Okay. Now, here's the Cliff Notes version of my interpretation of my current chakra health. All right? So the stars falls closest to me in my very near zone, and that didn't surprise me at all. It represents the crown chakra, which is, uh, you know, spirituality and life purpose, right? Um, and now that I am working seriously with the Akashic records, I am focused on reaching the Akashic plane. Now look what sits above and below this card. The book above, the book is my card for the Akashic records. And the stork below, of course, is the card of changes and evolving. So I am currently learning and evolving in this area. And the box around this card shows that I've recently committed, right? I've recently committed to this new path, this new decision, right? That's the ring and the, the ways. And... Um, Let's see that. Okay. Here's the, I'm, I'm here. And then I have the child card and I've just begun to take the first steps on this new path. It's still a new and wondrous and amazing, you know, journey, right? Um, the moon and the lily, it, that, that's funny because I, I just, you know, just before I laid this spread, actually, um, I just, uh, decided to to find a, a teacher, a guru that I can work with, right? One who is known for um, their work in that in this area. Yeah, so that that shows that. All right, so let's go down to the letter. The letter represents the throat chakra, communication, right? And we have the rider and the um, mice, okay, flanking this card. And I have been putting new energy into nibbling away at my underlying feelings of lack in this area. I'm striving to be impeccable with my words, and that includes the language I use in my inner dialogues. Remember, I, I talked in the last video about NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. I mean, for example, if you keep saying you are broke, you will attract more brokenness. If you keep saying you don't have enough time, you will attract more time shortage. If you keep saying that your partner is a pain in the neck, your neck will hurt. <laughs> it's, it's amazing how this stuff works, but that is the law of attraction. Okay. So, um, watch the words you use. Yeah. Now, um, we have the ship and the ways and the stork above and that, um, the decision to make these changes is certainly an adventurous journey toward betterment. Yeah. All right. Let's go over here to the lily, which represents the sacral chakra. That's the card of, um, the chakra of passion, creativity, and emotions. And again, this is something I have been focusing on lately because in order to reach the Akashic plane, I have to go beyond the emotional plane. Now, regarding creativity, I was in a, a creative slump after finishing my second book, um, just as same as when I finished my first book, because I have to refocus, right? And changes, look at, we have the, the stork and the birds here, changes always stress me out a bit and I get a bit flighty and it you know it takes a little time for me for those birds to settle back into the tree right okay or I should say just come back to the come back to the ground <laughs> all right so what else do we have here okay so what I was saying about I was in a creative slump the the uh, cross below shows that and the the child above does show that I am taking the first steps now on a new path. Okay. And you know, yes, the, the birds is also excitement and I am excited, but like I said, it's, um, changes are always a little stressful for me. Okay. So this is, um, we here, let me just go here first. Take note that the, the stars card, right? A minute ago, I read around the stars card as I, singled it out to represent the crown chakra. 
Well, now I am doing the same with the lily. I am singling this card out. This is a life area card, right? And I am using it to um, represent the sacral chakra. So now when I go up here and I'm using the stars card as a descriptor of this card, I am not seeing this now as the crown chakra. I am just using it as the stars card. All right. Now pairing the stars with the dog, I see that I am now loyal to this new path and it's the right path for me at this time. We could say it's a friendly path. Now the tower and the mice is an interesting combination because the tower represents standing my ground and rising above for a long period and the mice is taking away from that with its underlying worries, restlessness, and maybe even feelings of avoidance. Now th this is striking me as important. So I'm going to meditate on what this could mean. In fact, I'm going to draw some grand jeu cards to figure this out, right? So remember that the, this is the, the, um, the chakra of passion, creativity, and emotions. And I know already that this is a big issue for me, getting control over my emotions to maintain a high level of passion and creativity. So this is, this is a red flag for me right here. All right, now the other four chakra cards uh, land outside of my, um, land in my line of sight, but they land outside of my comfort zone. So I'm going to read the three cards that connect me to them, okay? Because they're in the line of sight. We don't have the cardinal point cards, but we have cards between. Um, so I could say that um, a new pathway is opening regarding um, new pathway, regarding striving to advance to a higher level. Um, I think better put, I am inspired to take the first steps in reorganizing my spiritual life, okay? But these are three positive cards that are connecting me to these cards, all right? That's all good. Um, and like I said, they're distant, right? They don't need my attention right now but we have these cards, okay, above and below them. So let's look at them. Now, I notice that the house or root chakra card shows that I am currently feeling more secure now because it's, you know, it's got these nice cards connecting me and, and it's distant um, after a period of insecurity caused by the pandemic, but I'm still experiencing a bit of discord regarding safety. Okay, and now I'm saying that because it's um, above the coffin and it's got the whip above it, all right? So see how I'm putting that all together, right? It's distance, positive cards between me and them, but I'm using these cards to describe exactly what's going on, all right? Now I, I noticed that the root, heart, and third eye cards all touch the tree, but they're sitting above, showing that they're currently rising above a period of stagnation. And I wouldn't read too much more into it than that because they're all far. Now the heart above is influenced by the clover, so that's uh, new opportunities to advance and new spontaneity, new, new feelings of being carefree and, and all of that. Now the third eye card, that really, um, that really cracked me up because it, sh it shows that it's got the fox above and the, the clouds below. So it, it shows that I'm rising above confusion, but the fox above says I'm still feeling a bit, something's a bit wrong, right? And that's a fact. I have from day one always felt that I could be even more intuitive. And yes, I still sometimes doubt my intuition, just like everybody else. We could say that I'm still a bit foggy and cautious. But again, nothing needs my attention right now because this is all far. The last card here, the solar plexus uh, card is, is sitting above the mountain, showing that I'm rising above challenges, probably because of the bear above, right? Influencing this card with my courage and strength. Ooh. There it is, my friends. Um, I really enjoyed this spread, I have to say. So why not give it a try and have some fun with it? It will help you get comfortable with a specific theme, non-conventional GT. It'll strengthen your focus abilities. It'll strengthen your intuition while finding out more about your chakras at the same time. 
So thanks for watching everyone as usual and now go play with your cards. Bye everybody.